So uh, to a story which has been bubbling away this week, Gordon Elliott was uh, before a British Horse Racing Authority independent panel today, remotely, and he has been fined a thousand pounds sterling owing to the fact that Zana here, horse he trained, uh, finished third in last year's champions hurdle at Cheltenham uh, behind Honeysuckle, was found in a urine test to have hydroxylidocaine present. Hydroxylidocaine being a local anaesthetic. So 11 months on from that uh, race, remote hearing today. Uh, Zana here uh, disqualified from last year's champions hurdle, finished third, like I said, and Gordon Elliott fined £1,000. Uh, the BHA investigation, the British Horse Racing Authority investigation, included an unannounced visit to the Elliott Yard. They um, have discounted potential contamination at the Elliott Yard. That's been ruled out. And none of the staff were taking any medication which could have resulted in the positive test. So there is a, a mystery element to how this happened. That they have failed to establish the source of the substance. And so for more on this, we're joined by Mark Boylan of the Irish Field. Mark, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Thanks, me and Joe. Good to be here. So I suppose just to ascertain the seriousness of this offence, how commonplace an offence like this is, is, is partly the aim of this uh, piece. In, in any sport, really worldwide, uh, a failed test of any kind is major scandal. But reading through the BHA independent panel today, they are putting this uh, at the medium to low end of offences. I, 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 you have a fair understanding of, of what went on today in the remote hearing. Yeah, I sat in on earlier today, Joe, um, and I have to say, in terms of the penalties that could have been dished out, this was certainly on the lower end. Um, there is a scale of culpability that the BHA can determine low, medium or high. The BHA were never pressing for high. Um, they initially saw it medium, but the lower end of medium. Um, but Gordon Elliott's legal representative, Rory McNeese, um, his case to have it down to lower was uh, ultimately heard and agreed with by the, the chairman of the panel. Um, listen, it's in terms of the regularity of these things, um, you know, when you're dealing with horses, it's that little bit trickier. We're, we're not saying humans are straightforward by any means, but with horses, in terms of contamination, who they've seen, who they've been with, especially in this case where the location of where it's happened, Joe, because this was at Cheltenham in the stable yard at Cheltenham, we're assuming, because the detection time for uh, lidocaine in this instance is 72 hours. So Zanna here would have been in Cheltenham for those 72 hours before running the champion hurdle. It's not as if he was in Gordon Elliott's yard where there is only, let's say, a limited number of people who could have been around him. This is when you travel to Cheltenham and you're in a stable yard, there's a shared area where all different stable uh, staff are coming and going. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of people on, on the ground over there. I think Gordon had upwards of 25 staff of his own at Cheltenham to give you an idea of that. So I think ultimately where we've come with this case is that the BHA haven't been able to get a solution or an explanation as to where this positive has come from. Gordon Elliott has turned over every document he can in terms of the horse's veterinary records, the horse's feed, the staff, what any medications you pointed that they could be taken. Because initially there was a theory potentially that Bongella, because lidocaine can be found in some over-the-counter kind of uh, without prescription uh, topical medications like Bongella, it was thought initially it could have been that that the girl who put the tongue tie on Zana here to race had been using Bongella, but that was ruled out. So they have they've exhausted this both sides. Gordon Elliott's legal representative made clear that they were very very eager to understand where this came from because they had no they had no basis of where it could have came from themselves. So ultimately, they've, neither party has been able to kind of come to a solution as to why it's happened. They found Gordon Elliott in the lowest kind of end of culpability, I suppose, that you could get. The penalty reflects that. And the horse being disqualified, is it's a standard practice. Once you know, Ultimately, the letter of the law is the trainer is responsible if a horse fails a test. Yes. If a horse fails a test, that's why you know, the trainer has to be accountable for it. And Gordon has, has to pay the penalty of that. The horse that he's tested positive, he has to be disqualified. So in terms of the, the, the layout, that's quite straightforward. But as to how it happened is, is the thing that's... That's curious. And Mark, lidocaine, this substance, which is a local anaesthetic, does that tend to crop up in positive tests routinely? Is this a, 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 a popular finding amongst adverse fi <coughs> adverse drug tests? I wouldn't have thought so. I'm, I'm struggling to think too often on, on, on if I've seen it popping up. The IHRB, when they do release on our side of the water here, um, findings, they always state the substances. I know that there was... I, think, I didn't get stats for last year in general, but after every race, just for context, the winner is tested in Ireland. 
there are a select number of horses then that are also tested. Let's say we have a beaten favour or something runs inexplicably badly, they can be tested also. But I think the 2021, 20 positive tests from race date, total sampling of 3,021. So we're not getting these all that often anyway. And in terms of that substance, it's not one that's jumping off the page to me, three hydroxy lidocaine. Right, okay. Doesn't, so it, doesn't it's not something we're seeing through. routinely. Uh, as you said, the Elliott uh, legal team, they argued that the horse went to Cheltenham and was at the race course stable on the 12th of March. Test happened on the 15th. There is a detection time of 72 hours. So their contention is this did not happen at the Elliott yard. This happened somewhere along the way at the uh, Cheltenham race course. The BHA uh, criticism of Elliot, if there is one, falls along the lines of him not having uh, guidelines at his stadium or, or at his stable if, if, if members of his staff were taking any kind of medication which could uh, ret- uh, result in cross-contamination. There doesn't appear to be any uh, training or guidance or procedure in place for the staff or procedures for them to say, I'm, I'm using, it, say it's Bongella, I'm using Bongella. Uh, and I'm, and there's a, a way for me to let everybody at the stadium know. And so that was their criticism that those procedures or that training should be in place. Elliot's legal team responded and said, uh, that's all very well. There is no recording process, but um, that's not to say that uh, caused the issue here. But they've actually, the point that Rory McNeese made on that was that the BHA and the stable yard have control over everyone that can go in and go out. They can take note of who goes in and goes out, but they don't record the medicines that the stable staff go into the, you know, if you're on, a, we've seen in the past, Joe, actually cases where if we have people that are taking antidepressants and then they urinate themselves in the box, they're working with the horses, they're on their feet, they, have, they urinate yeah. in the box themselves. Yeah. The horse then contacts the anti makes contact with a bedding that has antidepressant and all of a sudden the horse tests positive for an antidepressant. That's, there is no uh, obligation from the BHA's point of view where they are at the moment going into stable yard, or race course stable yards and requiring the staff that deal with the horses to list the medications they deal with. So the, the argument from Elliot's legal representative is that if we don't have to do that, if you're not doing it on the track with stable staff that come into the stable yard, yes. we're not doing it at home. So if you're calling it a significant failing on the Elliot team for not doing that, surely it's a significant failing on the BHA for not reciprocating if it was that vital. It's it's a tricky one, Joe, in the sense of like, I think the, the tone of coverage, I think if this was a smaller trainer, I'm not sure we're kind of having this chat this evening. Maybe right. that's not the right thing I should say in terms of, you know, selling the story. If this was a smaller trainer in a smaller race, I think this is a this is a, a less significant uh, story. It garnered Elliott, huge profile, 34 Cheltenham Festival winners. We all know the, the, the profile that he has in terms of, but look, he's also had, uh, you know, difficulties in the past, you know, two years. BHA, obviously, it, front and centre in that sense with the controversy over the pictures that emerged in the run-up to Cheltenham in 2021. This, you know, in terms of, I think if a different trainer had, had this instance, I don't think that the tone of coverage is quite so piercing on it. And we all have to, like Gordon has said himself, his statement today was very much that he's he's glad that it's come out with low culpability on his behalf. Mm. But, you know, ultimately, book stops with him. He's at a loss to explain it, but... You know, none of us want to see these things popping up, but I think uh, in terms of the, pe- the penalty reflects, I think the fact it's a thousand quid of a fine. You know, we see very different levels of, of fines for uh, for these sort of cases in different scenarios, and um, I- I'm not quite so sure that the BHA or you know they went and saw this as a massive, massive uh, incident for all the uh, champion yes, hurdles. Okay. One of the unsatisfactory things to find out, sorry, Joe, the, if you back the third, the fourth horse who's now been promoted to third, Sant Roy, Willie Mullins. Willie Mullins and J.P. McManus will get the £47,700 in prize money. But if you back the horse's hard luck, you can't collect for each way terms. You know, that's yes. that's just in the rules. We've had a few people querying that today. And I suppose, Mark, on the Elliot point, I do accept what you're saying and about his profile. And yet I suppose the elite trainers in particular, that the most winning trainers should be held to account in the strictest possible terms. Was there any, and I asked this question, by the way, without any agenda or a knowledge, this is, I, I, I'm purely just wondering, I, I haven't had a chance to listen to the full hearing today. Was there any suggestion that this substance has the possibility to be used as a masking agent? Was there any suggestion on the BHA's part that there was something more serious going on here? No, I, I, di- I didn't get that impression at any okay. stage. I never heard that, that those sort of terms spoken about. I think there was, you know, when you're talking about something that is, you know, from the family of local anesthetics, there is obviously a potential for kind of an, an analgesic effect, but I didn't get any sense that this was a, 
this was kind of portrayed in that sense. Okay. Uh, so for Elliot, there's a degree of put this behind him. This is obviously not going to be the scandal of, of uh, two years ago, to say the least, and uh, continue ahead to Cheltenham, full steam ahead. This uh, this kind of a um, story is not going to cast a shadow uh, amongst the horsing fraternity over his Cheltenham. I wouldn't have thought to know, Joe. I mean, like, if to me, the, the strange thing I would say is I know this is a complex investigation in terms of, you know, they've exhausted every avenue in terms of, like, even they're saying with Zanna here himself, they've gone and they've, the two, I think, uh, veterinary surgeons would have inspected Zanna here in the run-up to Cheltenham. They've gone through every file and every medication they could use on him. They've checked the feed of Gordon Elliott's yard. They've checked what they would have been brought to Cheltenham. They've checked the medicines of the staff. Like, I understand it's not a straightforward thing in determining yes, no, but I, I think it's curious that we're here 11 months down the line, a month from Cheltenham, and this is kind of hasn't been dealt with beforehand. We had a positive test in a champion hurdle before for a, a substance that popped up. Um, forgive me, I can't remember the fine it was, but the horse was, I think, Jan Wirtz, uh, and he, he he disappointed in the champion hurdle ultimately, but he tested positive for a substance afterwards. That was dealt with by the summer, to my knowledge. I would like to have seen this dealt with in a more prompt fashion, and I think, you know, for Gordon, I think if it happens in, in July, if it happens in August, there's no... There's no talk going into Cheltenham. I, I still don't think this is, a, is of any significance as opposed to the Cheltenham team. Like, obviously, look, at, I'm not trying to, to bury this away. Far from it. Because, look, at, we all take these things so seriously. And particularly at the highest level, when you're talking about Cheltenham Festival, you know, it's, it's a victory for the system that they have found something. But it's not a victory that they can't ultimately mm. find the solution of where it's Yeah, no, it, 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 there is a, an unsatisfactory aspect to this. Why has it taken 11 months finally? I haven't got any indication as to that. It wasn't touched on today in the hearing. I didn't hear any dissatisfaction from the Elliott camp uh, in the or the league representative in the Elliott camp, but I just thought that could have been dealt with quicker. You know, we have a horse test positive. I think it was in April time they came to Gordon for the unannounced inspection. Like, I understand the BHA have a lot in their plate at the moment, and I think the, the quip rules uh, that we're dealing with is very much self-inflicted in terms of dedication of resources from a media standpoint, but I just think we, we could have had this dealt with long ago. And, okay. you know, ultimately we end up with a band that's a, or with a, a disqualification that's, you know, if you're the owner of Zana here, it's a pain in the backside. If you've, you know, for Gordon, a thousand quid isn't going to make a difference. But in terms of headlines and profile, like I've seen some media coverage today in, in Britain where there's a picture of Gordon sitting on the dead horse used with that. You know, look, at you pay, you do silly things, stupid things. You have to pay the consequences. But I think, you know, you see those sort of things popping up now. You just kind of question if, as I said to you, if this was someone else, I don't think this is, is reaching this sort of scale. Okay. in terms of coverage. so uh, Mark, thanks for your perspective and thanks for filling us in on that. Appreciate it. Thanks a million. Mark Boylan there from the Irish Field who did sit in on that BHA hearing uh, this afternoon. So again, the, the net finding in at the lower end, Gordon Elliott fined £1,000. Zana here disqualified from last year's champion hurdle and uh, no source established as to how the uh, lidocaine ended up in Zana here's system.